Welcome into Between the Pylons. I'm John Camacho. And this is Jacob Waters. And guys, we have a very, very special episode for you guys today. Mainly because we're going to be talking some awesome football. We're going to be talking college. Uh, the t- Final Four came out today. I vehemently disagree with it. I was, I was a little upset, actually. I was, I was downright mad. You were shocked. We're going to have to have a little bit of a callback from last week's episode because... I'm just I'm just shocked. We'll get to that, and then at the uh, the other topic we're going to talk about, it's going to be kind of a roundtable discussion. We have two main topics we want to focus on. Uh, we're going to be talking about teams that will draft a quarterback in the 2021 NFL draft. We'll get into some of the quarterbacks that obviously will be going uh, at, at the top, and uh, some some big shifts that happen with that number one spot that most of you probably already know about. But for, before we get to all of that. It is your 25th birthday. I want to say happy birthday Thank you. to my good friend, Jacob Twatters. Um, Thank you. 25 years old. How's it feel? I'm, I'm old, man. How, how does it feel? Because it's it's December 22nd. What's yeah. it like having a birthday on the 22nd? You well, just tell it's everybody? It's happy birthmas. Like, yeah. what they do is show up and be like, Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah. This is for your birthday, yeah. too. <laughs> there you go. Because my favorite thing is, is you know, on Tuesdays, we uh, we all try and get together. A lot, of, a lot of our friends get together, you know, play games. You used to play basketball basketball when it's warmer and today we're doing a dirty santa right on your birthday we're doing a yeah, dirty santa that's how it goes. and we'll say happy birthday but it's, which is it's fine warmer. i don't like surprises anyways <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable i love it i love it all right buddy we're, let's get going uh great birthday episode here between the pylons um let's dive into this draft man or excuse me this this college yeah bullshit i'm you gotta explain it because it heats me up i'm not no, uh i was i was shocked to see the, the one through four go out. So we have Alabama at the obvious one. They played a great game against Florida. Props to Florida for keeping it close later on in the game. Um, number two, Clemson. They mm-hmm. they destroyed Notre Dame. Absolutely didn't even stand a chance. Trevor Lawrence or not, the big thing that changed in that game was the Clemson defense showed up to play. They stopped them. Notre Dame couldn't do anything. Then number three, we have Ohio State. That's a little controversial considering the 6-0 and struggled against Northwestern early on. Yeah. Minimal games played. And the four, it's like, who's it going to be? Oh, my God, it's Notre Dame. They yeah. gave Notre Dame a shot after getting their teeth kicked I, in. I, and like, so here's the here's the backstory on this. And I, I actually meant to clip it out and, and be ready to play it on the spot. Didn't do that. Terrible, terrible producer here. I apologize. Um, but last week we were talking about, you know, how the Final Four is going to lo- get end up looking. And we looked at this ACC championship and it was Clemson versus Notre Dame. And I said, so Texas A&M, as long as they win, they're in because one of these two teams is going to lose and be out of the top four. I thought it was a done deal. I thought even if it would have been close, Notre Dame was still probably going to be out. Like if Clemson won by four points by a field goal, you know, even even if they went to overtime, I thought if Notre Dame lost this game, they would probably be out. And, and I, I was clearly wrong. Fair enough. If it would have gone to overtime, probably would have been a bigger uh, decision, and we could at least sit here and say, I get it. That's the way that I said Notre Dame makes it. Yes. I said that they can afford a close loss, yeah. even even a seven, little over, maybe a 10-point window yeah. at the furthest. Make it look close. Thir- it was it was 30, right? 34 to 10. And, and guys, it wasn't close. It wasn't close. There was there was a point where I think uh, I, I think Notre Dame had a chance. They were actually I think up by a field goal early, and they had and they a chance a to to yeah to take a commanding lead. They were down in the the red zone. They ended up uh, kicking a field goal that should have been a chip shot, missed, and it was all Clemson all after that. From there. All downhill That was in like the end of the first, beginning because of the second Tra- quarter, Trevor somewhere in that ballpark. On their first drive, he that's threw, right. He threw an interception, exactly, and it looked like, uh oh, is Clemson going to come back to a slow a, start? Is there going to be a blowout? I was getting excited. I was like, holy shit! You know, I, I have a bet with Jacob. If Clemson or Ohio State yep. wins the national championship, I, I lose twenty bucks, so or fifty bucks. 50 excuse bucks. me. And going so, back to that bet, I w- always asked. I was like, man, do I want? You know, both teams made it. Clemson yeah. and Ohio State is who I have my money. You are going to have one team I'm that's going to be there. You're going to be. I wasn't sure if I wanted to be like that or if I wanted. One to play the other and one to play the other so I could have a guaranteed yeah. I win championship. Of but course. Either way, this gets me one shot at it. Mm-hmm. At the worst, it's one week off of having to pay you yeah. because Alabama <laughs> is very much a thing. Yeah. And Notre Dame is going to get their teeth kicked in. Yes. I saw Notre Dame fans. I saw it was an elderly couple watching the, the playoff preview show. And the lady on the couch was saying, please not number four. Please not number four. She didn't want it. Yeah. They don't want this because these fans, get crushed. these fans are used to getting all the attention, all the notoriety, and then when the big game happens, they just go to sleep, man. Notre Dame gets the crap kicked out of them. 
Now you got Alabama coming. How mad are you if you're Texas A&M playing all SEC schedule? Let's go to Texas A&M and number five here. They did everything they could, right? They they beat Tennessee 34 to 13. They beat Tennessee just as bad as Clemson beat uh, Notre Dame, right? Yes. So game was game was pretty much over. Uh, they they beat Auburn. They beat LSU. Granted, you know, not the, the best teams. Who they lose to? I don't even remember. They lost, they to, lost Alabama. to Alabama. They lost to Alabama. Got, got smashed by Alabama. Fair enough. You're telling me they didn't deserve another shot at Alabama? When you played an all SEC schedule, you you took care of Florida, you took care of you know uh, of South Carolina. It wasn't the worst schedule in the world. I get it. Your your big wins were probably what Florida, Auburn, uh, LSU, Tennessee. I mean, you have yeah. you have Arkansas there. Florida, you have, Florida being one of the, the major yeah. ones there. Yeah. So I, I get it. But you played an all SEC schedule. You came out almost unscathed, and then you watch the team that's going to be ahead of you get their teeth kicked in by the number two team in the country. I it just uh, it makes absolutely no sense to me. I, I don't get it. Um, I, I, I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to. I don't believe the the people that are making these decisions. The the committee, the playoff committee. I, I don't believe that they are honestly looking for the four best teams. I don't. I can definitively agree with you 100. Yeah. percent They put out a rhetoric that says we are looking at the best teams no matter what. Listen, yeah. cut this shit. If you want to have an argument for the best teams out there, I won't even mention A and M in this. Florida, they're a three-loss team. I get that. They dropped a crappy game to LSU. Texas A&M beat them by that. I understand the three losses. They shouldn't be there. But if you were looking for the best teams in the country, pick the team that went toe-to-toe with Alabama and lost by six points. That is the closest margin we have seen at Alabama. And Florida was able to erase a a 31-17 to halftime deficit. Come back and make it a ball game. Sure, they they misplayed it. They They had an interception where the guy got absolutely railed and bam, I got the ball back. Mistakes happen in the game, but if you're looking for that, I would have rather seen a nine and zero Cincinnati got their shot because at least and listen, they didn't trip up. Yeah, yeah, and listen, I, I'm not going to argue for it because there are people saying, "What about Cincinnati? What about Coastal? Is it impossible for these guys?" Yes, it is. It yeah, is impossible. You're not getting yeah. in. I'm sorry. No yeah, way. you you are not in a conference. You do not play the teams where you have the ability. Now, if you schedule a game against a big SEC team and you win that game and you win your 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 uh, the rest of your schedule, you know, you probably do deserve to get in. And, and if that happens, and I'm sure at some point in, in college history it will happen, or college future, it, it'll happen at some point. Didn't happen this year for Cincinnati. Didn't happen for Coastal Carolina. Both undefeated teams uh, ended up number eight for Cincinnati and number 12 for Coastal Carolina. Look, I think they deserve to be there. I think it's a testament to the program, to the coaches, and to the to the players to be in the top 10, top 15 of the final rankings. That's awesome. And now you're going to get a great bowl game against a big school. You don't belong in the college football playoff. So, so like in Cincinnati's I, catching Georgia. So, yeah, there you go. exactly. So they that's their playoffs. And if they beat Georgia... You know what? Come back, come around next year. Maybe you deserve it. Like maybe, maybe we take a second look. Kind of the same thing with uh, with UF when they had the two year run where they're really good. The second year, I thought that you know, okay, maybe the second year if they if they could do it UCF. again, they deserved it. Yeah, yeah, they they might have deserved it the second year because they their that program was so good for so they, long. They beat Auburn I in that ball game that yeah. one time. But I feel the same way about Cincinnati Georgia as I did the Auburn UCF because for the smaller school, Georgia, it's Georgia their Super Bowl Georgia, this is a let down game yeah. for Georgia. They they don't want to play this game. They don't want to play they're Cincinnati. Seven and two, they're already going through all the COVID tests and all that bull crap that yeah. they've been going. Where with. where are they on this them, list? Some of them just aren't oh, their number their number. And nine. Okay. Yeah, they're so, nine. yeah. So they they lost out on their playoffs, like a legitimate school that that had playoff uh, aspirations. They lost out on it. I I actually agree with because I remember our old ba- bosses. I, th- I think we worked together at the time when Auburn yeah. played UCF and and lost in that playoffs. I'm I'm gonna bet on Cincinnati. Well, yeah, uh, I'm gonna bet on Cincinnati I mean, Moneyline to win this game. To that game, saying, bro, we had we had four seniors sit out because they're going yeah. pro. It's a letdown season. These guys just had their hearts ripped out because they didn't win the SEC championship. Yeah, and now they have to go play. The small guy who's playing like he's twelve playing foot for tall. Everything. Yeah, yeah this, this is their moment. Bet on Cincinnati in this game. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that, man. All right, so we obviously disagree with uh, with the playoffs. It, it, it sucks. I, I'm going to say it again. I have been a proponent for this for a while. Take away two games out of the year and make it eight games. Make it sixteen games. I, I, I don't care. I would rather see something like that. Sixteen might be too much, but eight games so fucking fair. Eight teams. Eight that's teams. That's, eight that's teams, what I'm saying. Eight games, this eight teams, this yes. playoff needs to evolve into an eight-team format. Yeah. And listen. At I, the bare minimum, six. Yeah. Because you have five power five conferences. 
the, the Big 12, Pac-12, Big 10, ACC, SEC, winner automatic bids. Six, Period. six, you give Cincinnati their chance. You give the Coastal Carolina their chance. You give the the one lost Texas A&M SEC loser, you give them the chance. But you can have these auto. That's why I say eight, man. Yeah, I think it should be eight. eight you give I think you, you, have auto five, you have five guaranteed. And, and honestly, yes. I think it should be five. And that's one through five. You, you, your, your top five are scheduled one through five. And then the, the top five can can vary based on skill. It's probably going to be the SEC team at number one, obviously. But like if a Clemson, you know, uh, crushes everybody, they probably end up at number one, something yeah. like that. But you can rank that five however you want. Who cares? People can get mad about that. That gives you your clicks. That gives you your your talking points. All that bullshit that the college that that's part of the conversation. I guarantee you with within the uh, within the the offices. And then you have three teams, the best three teams that didn't win their conference. If they didn't get a chance to win their conference, and, and yeah, look, no matter the excuse, and look, you give the the small dog their chance. I will. The big one. I will argue if that would have happened this year, Notre Dame still shouldn't have gotten it. I will make that argument. If there were eight teams, and they got in at four, but if there was eight teams, they were in the ACC championship game, and they lost, I feel like that was your playoffs. Like, that was the first round of your playoffs. You fucking lost. You don't get it. I, I feel like that, that should almost be the, the way it's looked at. I, it's not going to end up working that way. I get it. But, I mean, I, I really feel like uh, you're when you're in a situation like Notre Dame and Clemson were in, that was that was a, a that was an NFL playoff game essentially. You yeah. know, you lose, you're out kind of kind of situation is what it is. Eight, eight teams should be the standard. I, I can't wait until they go to that. It has to go to that. The way this is set up is so fucked, and I get it. It used to be two teams, and you know that that's tougher. But honestly, two teams would be easier than one. Team. Did you hear the reasoning behind as to why Notre Dame did over A and M? Yeah, they compared schedules, and Notre Dame had one more win over a ranked team than A and M had technically. So you're not picking the best team, and I can't. So you're not fucking picking the best at team at the time. Yeah, exactly. you're not. You're not. You can't they, they fucking. Have a, say they have a formula. <laughs> that's the thing is that when when it goes by their Fuck guidelines, that, <laughs> they'll say yes, this team's the better team. At the end of the day, too, I personally think that a lot of people out there they were going against the SEC bias here. No one wanted to see the AM Bama matchup in the first round. That and that's that's my argument behind it. Notre Dame fans didn't want to see them get their teeth Listen, kicked in by Bama. I, I'm a fucking Florida State fan. I don't want to see uh, Jeff Fisher succeed. I don't, I don't want to, Jimbo Fisher. Oh yeah, Jeff, Jeff Fisher. Jesus. <laughs> um, I don't want to see Jimbo succeed. I don't want to see. I don't want to see Texas M be good. I was so fucking happy when Texas M was bad. Texas A and M was bad for a couple years, and they were thinking about buying Jimbo Fire. out already. Yeah. You know, I, I was fucking excited and was like, "Fuck, well, fuck Jimbo. He left. He left my school." So, uh, but I'm still sitting here saying Texas A and M was the better fucking team this year. They just were. Period. I mean. Whatever it is, what it is, we're just kind of repeating ourselves. No, no, it's not good it's, content because we both agree. It's but. fine. It's unfortunate. A yeah. and M should have edged out and gotten there because of the margin of victory that Clemson had over them. This is yeah. too. This should be too fresh in our minds. Notre Dame getting beat down. What, did, what did Clemson have to do? Did they have to bring uh, put fifty on them? Like what? What was the uh, what was the mindset for? Like because I can't imagine if you're making this decision, you have to go into that that championship weekend, especially this year when we saw Clemson and Notre Dame at two and three going at each other. You had to go into it thinking if this happens, this happens. If this happens, this happens. Right. So you go into that and you say. If Notre Dame loses and gets blown out to Clemson, they're still in. You went into the weekend thinking that. I don't get that. I, I don't understand the mindset. What? I, I'm they, sorry. They, they're <laughs> saying that a one loss ACC is better than a one loss SEC. And you, when you compare That's apples stupid. to apples, the the meat that is in the SEC that you have to get through. I mean, even LSU this year. I'm not going to say that they're a good team, but you put them in other conferences. They're middle of the road. Yeah. Listen, there's Listen, a reason. I'm not going to argue and say games. their schedule was awesome. Their their big win was Florida. They yeah. lost Alabama. They they beat Auburn, who wasn't great. They beat LSU, not great. They beat South Carolina, Arkansas. They they beat uh, Mississippi State. They beat uh, Vanderbilt, and it was a close game against Vanderbilt. But that was the first game of the season, so you kind of give them. But you want to know how the committee values other games? Yeah. Auburn, a four loss Auburn team, unranked. Go back to the rankings real quick. Is playing Northwestern. The team that just lost to Ohio State in the championship game, 14th ranked Northwestern. Mm -hmm. That is the second Big Ten team versus the fifth SEC team. Yeah, so they They're clearly that, value. They the, know that the SEC is deeper and better, mm -hmm. but they didn't when it came to one through four. Wow. That, that, that's, a, that's such a great point, too. Wow. Weird. Yeah, Unranked really, Auburn is about really to have weird. to go take on 14th North Northwestern. Yeah. That's just where yeah. it lines up. Yeah. So we, we got to move on here because I wanted to bring this up. 
Uh, this is not going to turn into an Auburn podcast, I promise, guys. But, I mean, look, we got to talk about what matters to us. Yeah. And, and I need, because we were talking about this playing Xbox last night. I need you to go through the names that have declined this job. What's going on with this Auburn, cause it, it, this Auburn hiring system? Because it's so strange. It's such an interesting story. And I'd really like you to just take it away here. Uh, Napier from Louisiana gets $800,000 annually from that university. He is a good coach. He is a proven coach, unproven at the big level. But, of course, you know you're Auburn, you want to give him the chance. They offered him five and a half million dollars and he turned it down. He said, no, this is the chance for a guy to make a big step. We have Clark from UAB. UAB is a program, you know, they, sh they had a football team, they shut it down. He came back, has them on the map now at a collegiate level, mm -hmm. doing good things. Still don't want him personally, but Auburn offers, offers him up. They say no. Lane Kiffin has declined interest. He's at Ole Miss. He currently has a job. That's cool. That's That's awesome. There have been so many Steve names. Steve Sarkeesian, what, right? There's another one. Sarkeesian has said no. Sarkeesian yeah. has come out and said no. When you were a Power 5 blue blood program like Auburn is, I truly believe that, unbiased. I think Auburn is... Yeah, I, I don't think anybody would argue they're, with that, right? I mean, a perennial top 25 team that can go higher than that, depending on who's at the helm. Yeah. And you... You should have coaches flocking to you. You shouldn't have to go this below should, the bar. This get, on paper should be the the best job out there. And now, look, yes. I will I will argue against that because this on paper, you have to play at Alabama every year. Not the best job out there. I, I get it from that standpoint. But you're telling me there's nobody like coaches have, have to like have Bro, huge egos, right? I mean, Venable said no today. Venable said that's no. another one. Wow. Go figure, he's turned down a lot of jobs in the yeah, past. I, I honestly knew that one was coming. Crystal ball at Oregon already turned it down. But we're going on like coach number six or seven. Auburn is apparently, they were holding off on reaching out to Hugh Freeze. I don't mm -hmm. know why. They reached out to him today. We're going to see how that one goes. Hugh Freeze at Liberty, former Ole Miss, got kicked out. You know, it would be a good move. But at the end of the day, I'm hearing that it is the boosters controlling the program. Mm -hmm. They told Napier, they said, yeah, man, you can come. You can be the coach. You got to keep the D.C., which is Kevin Steele right now. They really are attached to him. I don't know what it is, but the old heads love Kevin Steele at Auburn. That you got to keep your DC and you can't bring any assistance over with you. Mm -hmm. Why are you going to take that job? If you're going to be constantly just minimalized and watched yeah. every move you make, uh, so, you need to get a coach who has free reign and he can do what he wants with the program. So, so we said on paper, this should be one of the best, the best hires. Yeah. They are making it one of the worst. And I just kind of want to break this down and, and hear your thoughts as a fan and as me somewhat unbiased, at least. You you have a program who is basically saying you don't have control over your your staff, you don't have control over over you know the amount of money that you make. Obviously, that was another thing that you were talking about. And then the big thing is you have to play Alabama every year. You have to play in the SEC, and you just proved that beating Alabama three times in six years is not enough to keep your job. You just proved that in a COVID down year for for Auburn, you lose four games, you're going to be out on the streets. Why take yeah. that job? All while being micromanaged. If you're a small town coach looking for your big jump, yeah, technically it's like, wow, well, Auburn SEC let me get up in there. But if you're going to take that shot, if you're going to finally remove your name from the hierarchy of small coaches mm -hmm. and go to the big level, you're going to want your best shot. The yeah. tools you all only around get you one. equipped. I mean, most exactly. of the time you only get and, one. And if you miss, goodbye, you're yeah. out. You know, Chad Morris got his shot at Arkansas. Didn't work out. He's out. He's the OC at Auburn now. Probably going to end up getting fired from that and be go back down the totem pole. Mm -hmm. Small coach, they're not wanting to take their shot right now. I don't know. It's it's bad for the program. It brings me back to everyone saying the grass is greener with Gus. It wasn't. Look it's, at all the shit that they put up with. Can now I, I see so many people uh, trying to repent on Twitter. It's too late, man. You got rid of him. You wanted him gone. Would it be insane if they went back and rehired Gus? Gus should say no. I mean, yeah, Gus should say no. Absolutely. But like they're already to the point where you cannot tell me you fired Gus and, and you were thought you were going to you were going to get at least one of the top names. Right. But you yep. fired Gus. You can't tell me you wouldn't rather have Gus than fucking some of these names that you already mentioned. I'm sorry. Crystal Ball at Oregon is is not a good coach. Like and that's, that's I, there the is, best name out of all. The yeah, out there. Like that's the name that's popular and, and people can get excited about it. I'm, I'm sorry, but a part of being a good coach is what you do with top talent. I saw what he did with Herbert. He squandered it. I've seen what he did against this Pac-12 uh, schedule that he had. Uh, he lost games that he shouldn't or his team lost games that he shouldn't. He has not proven that he deserves to be getting this job. He turned this fucking job down. He did. And I, Oregon I, I mean, Oregon upped his pay. He gets like four point eight million a year now. Yeah. Auburn would easily beat that. Oh, yeah. He wants to stay at Oregon. Yeah. And, and look, I, I think the best example was again the dude who, who you said was making eight hundred uh, thousand a year to yeah. you know 
whatever it is what it is it's it's ridiculous any other thoughts on that before we move on no no um it's just it, a it's, crazy story it's, sad. it's an i told you so moment like, yeah it is not really and i because it's my team that i'm having to watch sadly fall apart yeah i i i had a feeling i had a gut feeling it's like i'm a gus fan fire the man 21 million dollar buyout that is huge at the 30th he's going to be getting 21 million dollars in his fucking bank account so boosters get ready to pay up now you're struggling to find the next guy lined up and you can't blame him for not wanting to get that same scrutiny that Gus got yeah. at Auburn. And look, I think before we realized all of the the other things that that were going to be a part of this, obviously the uh, all the outside the, you know, noise, the, the outside noise. Yeah. You know, you have the you have the outside noise of the fan base that was not okay with just being really good, like not okay with just being a perennial top twenty five team that struggled against some of the best teams in the country. Not okay with that. We want to be the best. We want to be better than Alabama. Okay, fine. If that's your standard, whatever. But on top of that, you have a a boosters that are running the program, essentially. I mean, you have boosters right now. The way you explained it is, is that they're calling all the shots. You yeah. just get to go in and be a puppet. Fuck that. And you, I not, mean, you will not get a top coach who will take you above Alabama. You're taking that. you're taking circumstances that you can't control. You can't control that you play Alabama every year. You can't control that the fan base is a little bit on edge about about their coaching staff. That That's a lot of fan bases, though. So that's not really a, a serious uh, issue. But you can control these other things. You're turning one of the top jobs jobs in college football into one of the worst. It's absolutely ridiculous to me. Some of our um, last last things. Some of our players are tweeting out mm-hmm. Anthony Schwartz, you know, known track star, fastest guy in college. Yeah, is tweeting out circus emojis. Yeah, the players know. Yeah, of course they're they're tired of it. They know yeah. it is an absolute yeah. circus clown freak you think, show. You think the top seniors and juniors in high school know? It, yeah, they probably tell, know. Tell me about it. They probably so know. So what is that going to do to your recruiting class? Yeah. <laughs> Get ready. Auburn, you might become the UT of the SEC Jesus, soon enough. That's so Sucks, sad. Man. It is what it is, War though. Uh, we, we'll move on. Anywhere else you want to go, college? No. No, good, any, any big games? I, I feel like we kind of covered some of the top top names. Top, so it's uh, impossible Florida, to cover Florida, everything. Oklahoma is going to be a really fun game That's going to be a great game. That's going to be a great Florida game. I think Florida showed a lot of grit. It is just sad that they lost the LSU game the way they did because yeah. I do think that if they could have had two losses, no, one based loss. off of what the committee has shown us. Yeah. Well, I'm arguing two losses. Oh, okay. I still think they are one of the better. They, they're better than Notre Dame. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll, can, I'll tell you, you right now. You can argue A&M because A&M beats Tex- them. That's fine. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now. Texas A&M, Oklahoma, Florida, and Georgia are all better than Notre Dame. You, any one of those teams play them, they're, they and are going to be the favorite. Personally, I would rather see Cincinnati go just because they're undefeated yeah. with their record. At I, least give the small guys a shot. I, I left, uh, you know, I just named the next four teams. No, you, I left you Cincinnati because no I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. But Cincinnati might be able to take them. I don't know. And Notre Dame's a great school. I'm not trying to show Notre Dame. They belong as a top 10 school. They 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 have a good team around them. I, I get it. I really don't want to be a Notre Dame hater. Do you know what the line is on the But they don't game? deserve to be here. Do you know what the line is? Uh, you told me last night. I don't remember 25. what it was. Yeah, bet on that. Do you know, I, I remember you know you what happens me. if Florida plays Bama? It was 13 last time. Florida yeah. covered. It's going to go down from that. So yeah. you're telling me that if you have a Florida-Bama matchup with a closer line, that would be a better matchup. Notre Dame 25, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, You're not crazy. going with who the best team is. Crazy. All right, let's 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 move on. Uh, we're going to get into some college stuff. We're really trying to hit college hard, guys. If you if you are interested into, uh, excuse me, we're trying, trying to get the draft. We're getting into the draft stuff. If you are interested in the draft coverage, if you're really interested in the NFL draft, that, com- that combination from college to the NFL, because during the season we try and cover all the big stories going on with both uh, college and NFL. Bounce around. But in the NFL draft, it was really when we hit our stride we we absolutely love this subject we dive into it you know we 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 do a lot of research we put a lot of time and energy into it so if you're interested in that type of content please like and subscribe stick around for for you know future episodes because we're gonna have a lot of great stuff for you guys today the segment today the teams that are going to be drafting a quarterback because last year at this time and i don't have the the draft order in front of me but if you looked at a mock draft at this time last year there were five quarterbacks going in the first round. Of course. And, and it's just not going to happen. Last year, four quarterbacks went. One was kind of a surprise with uh, with, with uh, Love. But I remember last year at this time, you had the Georgia quarterback that was coming out. He was being talked about in the first round. You Jacob had Eason. Jacob Eason being talked about in the first round. All of these names that are now backups in the league that, that I mean, you know, we'll see what happens. And maybe they may, maybe they end up being something. Jalen Hurts was being talked about going in the first round. That's what happens at this time of year. We're going to try and look past that and we're going to use the most logical thing. We're not even talking how we're grading the quarterback or yet because we're not there yet. 
Let's just talk about the teams that are realistically actually going to draft a quarterback because last year it was unrealistic. It was un it just wasn't likely yeah. this year. We're just going to be very realistic. We're going to go down the line and uh, let's, let's start with the number one and number two team that are going to be drafting this year in the 2021 NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars and New York jets. Uh, we talked about it a Desperately little bit. Need yeah. Yeah. We, we were actually hanging out when, uh, when the jet, when the jets won, which was crazy. They Weird. beat the Rams. Um, and we, we really discussed all these different possibilities, how this could go down. And I want you to kind of, uh, give me give me your first thoughts, your your raw thoughts on this one two punch here on, on how this is gonna go down draft order. Jets is all I have is a wow. Yeah. Um I can't help but think that the players are fed up with the ownership and Adam Gase and the mm-hmm. organization so much that they somehow pulled out that grit and won that game just to give a big old fuck you to the owners and say, we're not tanking anymore. We're tired. <laughs> That's the only thing that I can come up with in my head yeah. as to why well, you listen, would not want this generational yeah, talent. In listen, listen, teams teams and coaches don't, don't tank. Don't we that. know that. Yeah. We know teams and to- coaches don't tank. Everyone's talking about the Dolphins tanking last year. And, and look, the front office was. The front office took away every single talented piece. But guess what? Uh, uh, we had a good coach in Brian Flores. We had young, gritty players. And we were, into, we were able to win, what, five games last yeah. year with the worst run roster in the NFL. I'm talking about my Miami Dolphins, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, teams, the players don't tank. The coaches don't plus tank. plus people on that team are one, are going in there, yeah. putting their jobs, their money, their future paychecks on the line to win. Yeah. They want to win. So, Jets, they did that. They got that win. There are so many different routes that we can take with what has happened now so, with the Jets. So, first of all, I, I kind of want to go through the emotion of a Jets fan, like yeah. a true Jets fan. I don't think there's many Jets fans that were happy about this one. Yeah, you don't want to go 0-16. But whatever, like, okay, it's it's something for your buddies to fuck with you about if you're, you know, if, you're, if it's a Jets and I Giants fan it. hanging out in a bar. But at the end of the day, it's not anything that actually matters. And if you go 0-16, what a year to go 0-16. Yes. I mean, shit. And now they lose one game. Jacksonville hasn't won a game since week one. Jacksonville overtook the Jets for that one in thirteen spot. Uh, you know, I, I was watching. I, I was watching a couple different people talk about it. Uh, you know, most notably the the punter Matt, Pat McAfee, who was the punter for the Colts when they when they were uh, they were really bad before they drafted Andrew Luck. Right? They actually won the exact same week. They went one in fifteen that year before they drafted uh, Andrew Luck. They won the exact same week all those years ago and you know he was talking about the elation of the players to get that monkey off the bat that, that's yeah. a big deal but he was also talking about how the ownership upstairs they had to take a deep breath and not look so fucking defeated after a big win for the for the franchise um yeah this i can't even imagine what it's like for a jets fan just the most jets thing to do the jets could realistically go one in 15 and not get the number one pick that's never happened before that has never that that has happened once. That has happened once, and it was when Carolina was uh, becoming a team w- was uh, introduced to the league, so they knew that they couldn't get that number one spot. So that's the only time. Actually, excuse me, it was Carolina that went one in fifteen. It was the Texans that were coming into the league. That's the only time it's ever happened that a one in fifteen team didn't get the number yeah. one pick. Crazy. It's it's sad, man. It really is. I just I don't. The, Trevor Lawrence is being talked about in the same breath as John Elway, Steve Young coming out of college. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence could have played one season in college and been a, fir- a, a guaranteed first round pick. I would argue number one. He pick would have been. He was as, the number as, one as pick. a freshman. He was the number one pick when he won that, that championship for Clemson. What? Two years ago now. He was the number one pick. Yes. He was and, already and you the go number back one pick. and listen to our pods. We and have said better. the coming of Trevor Lawrence is happening. It yeah. is here. It is upon us. We knew. The yeah. window between him and a Justin Fields mm-hmm. is up. Uh, it's a lot. Get, you have you have one A Trevor Lawrence. You're going all the way through the fucking alphabet before you get Justin <laughs> Fields, and that's credit to Trevor, not to just disown Justin yeah. Fields. Justin Fields is a talented quarterback, has Pro Bowl status written all over him. I think, in my opinion, and we'll see. You know, it gets different after that. But the whole point, Trevor it's is not a, a can't question. miss generational talent. New York Jets, that is in jeopardy for you. Let's now. put it this way. Let, let, let's put it in a different a different frame of mind for those of you who might not really get what we're saying. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence would be the number one pick, the number one quarterback taken in every single draft since Andrew Luck was drafted. And in, in the Andrew Luck draft, be an maybe there's an argument. Other than that, he is the number one pick. He is the number one pick over, name him. 
the number one pick every single time. All right. So, so that's what we're talking about here. This is a slam dunk lottery pick here. Jacksonville Jaguars. We'll see what happens. So we know what the number one pick is going to be. Let's yeah. imagine right now that where it stands right now with two games left in the, in the Just regular season, the we're going to lock it in. Look, yeah. the, the Jets could still get this number one pick. Giants could still, Jag, Jaguars obviously could hold on. We'll see what happens. If the Jaguars, you know, win a game, it could happen. We don't know. But right now, Jaguars, number one, Trevor Lawrence, that's one quarterback so, off the board. Let's get cool. back to our original topic. Yes. We had to give the Jets sadness a little bit of love. At number two, are they taking a quarterback? They had Sam Darnold, and I understand that's that might be yeah. an issue for some people. Look, Sam Darnold is what he is. I, I, we don't really know what he is because he hasn't really played on a good team yet. So, number two, does Sam Darnold, uh, do they move on from Sam Darnold draft a quarterback, or do they hold on to Sam Darnold? Are you asking me? You're asking I'm me. asking you. Yeah. What do they do? I think this is a question. I think it's a serious this question. Is a, this, that's why I said if we have teams that take a quarterback, the Jets are a maybe. And here's why. I personally, I stick with Sam Darnold. I don't think that Sam Darnold has had had good weapons around him since he started. He has Adam mm-hmm. Gase right now who couldn't give a shit about Garbage. him. Last year, Sam Darnold had that illness that kind of threw off his whole groove. And Mono, got, yeah. yeah, exactly. Didn't get going. If you take a Sam Darnold and you take a Justin Fields, Sam Darnold coming out has more flair to him than Justin Fields has mm-hmm. right now. Whenever the names were first coming out, Sam Darnold was a better prospect than Justin Fields mm-hmm. is better prospect right now. I keep Sam Darnold. I take I take Panay Sewell. I possibly trade down. As I say, you either, either trade down or take Panay Sewell. I, I right? would try yeah. to trade down and maybe pick up some more weapons. But you can't tell me with the Jets having that other first round pick mm-hmm. that Panay Sewell, generational lineman, to fit alongside Mekhi Becton, who is working wonderfully in that system. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know. I mean, I've seen Baby Gronk mention Firemuth getting taken as a tight end. I've seen um, some of any of the wide receivers. It's a very deep class. Yeah, in that they could go a lot of different directions. But does but, that sound better to you, or does taking the shot at Justin Fields and having to just yeah, look? Cut I, Sam I, I, it's a Justin Fields. Like, I'm not convinced it's Justin Fields. I, I you know I will start there. So but, in saying that, is it quarterback then? Yeah, I don't. I I think you do to go quarterback. I I, I will okay. say that. I get I get the argument. So I'm not like vehemently against it. I, I think it's a real decision. It's a real question. Uh, the question really is, and and I think this is a fair point. Do you want a quarterback that has proven throughout this season that that he can't put the team on his back and just win a fucking game? That's true. Uh, and look, I, he's, I'm, he's no Deshaun Watson. Yeah, and look, I'm not trying to share him. I, I get that. Not every quarterback is going to be the Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson. You put the best quarterbacks in the NFL on this team, they win like five or six games, and everyone would still be shitting on the quarterback except for people like us saying, hey, actually, he's really good. It's everybody else that's the problem. Yeah. But in this you situation, Baker, you throw Jared Goff, you throw Carson, it, all these above average quarterbacks. Yeah, I, I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know how many wins they they get. You put you put Jared Goff on that team. I, I think what two, maybe three wins. Like I, I'm not going to say better. I'd say the same. Right I, yeah, the same I, say, I don't think Jared Goff's that much. It, like if he's better than Sam Darnold, like, how? Like what way? You can't tell me there's one definitive thing that Sam Darnold, that Jared Goff can do that Sam Darnold can't do. <laughs> You're gonna do. have some Rams fans coming after you. Fuck it. The, I, look, the, the I've always been low saying, on Sam Darnold. That is what well, it is. The, the whole point you're saying me, is uh, that Jared Goff. the uh, the quarterback position right here is up for debate at the one spot. New York Jets, you had it. So, just you had it gifted <laughs> to you. So so let's let's get away from that. And I, I said all that to say, I get that argument of. You know, you didn't put the team on your back. So you, so what good are you? Let's move on. Let's get another quarterback. I look at this Jets team as a team that is not very good, okay. that needs a legit bare bones rebuild. And I think you have Sam Darnold in there who is a good quarterback. I have not lost faith that he is a good quarterback. Look, he was my number two or number three quarterback in that draft. I don't remember, whatever. Um, I, I liked him coming out. I thought, I think everybody did. It looked like a slam dunk when he was drafted. I am not ready to move on from Sam Darnold yet. I actually think that if Trevor Lawrence is not on the board, you you keep Sam Darnold and you fill up the rest of your roster. Yeah, right. That's what uh, I. Mean. No, that that's what. Yeah, that's what you think. So so I, I at the end of the day. So no to quarterback. We'll, we'll have we'll have two categories or three. We'll put no. Of mm-hmm. course, we're not going to go through every team that doesn't need one. They're pretty yeah. obvious. Maybe that's where the Jets are for me. Is a maybe. Yeah. And Jack, Jacksonville, of course, they are a yes. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. The Jets All are right. a maybe. I think that we will get some hate for it though. Yeah, I get it. I, I do get it. I look. I think. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I think at the end of the day, if you're if you think that Justin Fields or uh, or, or you know Zach Wilson or whoever it is is a superstar, that's fine. Because Sam Darnold to me has already proven he can be a good quarterback and he can he can probably start on a lot of teams or he hasn't proven it, but I still believe he can do that. But 
he's all he has proven to me that he's not a superstar. So if you believe the superstar is there, take him. I'm not ready to say there is a super superstar. So yes, let's say maybe there they are not in desperate need of a quarterback unless it's unless it's uh, Trevor Lawrence. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, honestly, you know. So that's we'll say that one and a half right now. Let's go down the rest of the list. We have Cincinnati. They're not no. taking a quarterback. Carolina and Atlanta are interesting. I put both of them at maybes. Really, and that depends on the way that it shakes up in this off season. Yeah, Carolina very well could go quarterback. It depends on what Matt Rule in this long rebuild believes is his quarterback. I don't think either team takes a quarterback. I really don't. Atlanta feels like more likely to me than Carolina because Atlanta is going to have a new coach, going to have a new organization altogether. They're going to be restarting. Are they going to look at this offense and say, yeah, you're good, but you're not good enough. Let's move on. Or- you can't rule them out as a no, though, altogether, because when you have a draft needs, draft board, quarterback is is – Mentionable in this I don't areas. think it. I don't think for really? Atlanta. You don't for think a, there's even a chance. No, nah, I really don't. I I, I look at Atlanta because I could see them just saying, "Hey, we want to just uh, do a total rebuild. We're going to re- restart." But you look at Atlanta. Their their real problem is creativity on offense, but it's not really the offensive firepower. And then it's defense. Period. I mean, just at every level. But with the rumors swirling about losing a Matt Ryan and Julio in the offseason, trying to get younger and move forward and just be done. Well, with yeah, that of course. Era. If that happens, then they're going to do. It. I don't think that's going to happen. B- the the way that I'm doing it is that if there's any chance at all they are a maybe they're okay, not, we'll a, put them they're in a, not maybe. a slated yes either of them because if you put them at yeses that means that we already have what one two be in the Jets four uh, yeah we have four no yeah, d- yeah that's no not draft it. works like that yeah exactly so so we'll, we'll, we have three maybes in the top five uh, you go Dolphins at number six that's the Houston uh, draft pick the Dolphins have Dolphins aren't taking a quarterback Philadelphia's not taking a quarterback Jalen Hurts is playing well. <laughs> he really is. Yeah, he's playing great. Uh, and w- regardless of what they do, they're not going quarterback there. Number seven, uh, number number eight gets interesting with the Dallas Cowboys. Do they take a quarterback? I, I look, we we made the argument for it in our first like top ten mock. I don't actually think they'll do it. I think there's. I think you can put them in the maybe column yeah. if they decide not to pay a Dak Prescott. And I certainly think there's an argument for it. I don't think they'll actually do it. I would actually argue to put this in the no. I would put it in the no before I put it in the maybe. Okay, so we'll just say I would, no there. I, I just don't think that Jerry would pull the trigger. Re- yeah, on realistically, the it's probably not going to Stuff like that doesn't happen. We yeah. just wanted to mention that there is a chance that... Yeah, we were, yeah. we were having fun There's with There's a it. chance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, number eight, or number, excuse me, number nine, Chargers, they're oh. not taking a quarterback. Giants, they're not taking a quarterback. Detroit, they're not taking... A, oh, you disagree. You stopped. Go go with your Giants take. Let's hear it. No, no, no. Daniel Jones is a no. They're the, I'm talking about the Detroit Lions. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they can move on from Matt Stafford. That's possible. Not saying that it should happen, but Stafford, Stafford has had injury concerns over his career. Stafford is a, a great quarterback. Issues. If you see the no-look passes that he's able to do, Mahomes does that. That's on replay on ESPN until yeah. till you go to sleep. Stafford does it. Uh, Stafford, St- Stafford and Aaron Rodgers, they've both performed yes. some no-look passes that got no buzz. It's ridiculous. Just how it goes. But yeah. um, there is a day and age when it is time to eventually move on from it. Not saying it should happen right now, but could we possibly see them pull what the Packers pulled this past year and maybe light a fire under Stafford or just get the guy that might be the future in the backup right there? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no. If, I, if there's a name that that falls, say Carolina, Atlanta, Dallas, all those other ones don't do the quarterback, and there's still – there's what if somehow Justin Fields or Zach Wilson is on the board right here? I think there is a chance that they might do this. Fair enough. Okay. Do you think they would trade up for a quarterback? I don't know if they're willing to put that much behind it because I, they, I think they I, are decimated in so many other areas yeah. on the defensive side of the ball. So here's my thing. When we get from 10 to, to really beyond that, you have to say, are they willing to trade up to grab a quarterback? To me, Detroit's and, and if, not. And if I can't say that, then I won't put them in that Yeah, that so spot. I think but that's kind of where we're at. on the fact that a quarterback could be coming soon okay. for them. So we're still going to say, we'll say maybe, maybe if you want to throw them in the maybe. Maybe possibly a Jalen Hurts move in the second or third. Something yeah. like that. Get somebody else back there because right yeah. now, when but right down, now, we're just talking first yeah, round. Exactly. So we'll say so, no. We'll no. say no right we'll now. Uh, San Francisco 49ers. Yes. 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 They, they, look, they, Jimmy Garoppolo has been injured the past two years. I get it. The Jimmy Garoppolo love is there for, for some people. He has not performed super great. Like, he's not the reason they went to the to the Super Bowl last year. And he, the it's kind of a cheap contract. And this is kind of the year where if this they wanted the to move on, they could. to do it before yeah. it gets bad. Exactly. So they could do it. I'm going to say yes. I, I do think that that they are a serious contender to take a quarterback. I'm I really say believe yes, that. And I want Trey Lance specifically. Yeah, that would be an I awesome stand pick. By that. Yeah. Denver is a no. Minnesota is a no. Patriots are a huge yes. They are. Yeah. Patriots are a huge yes. They're a huge yes. They could trade up. They could get rid of Stephon Gilmore and say, "Here's here's Stephon. Here's our first. Let's see if we can crack a top ten. Yeah, honestly. And look, look at Carolina. I think Carolina would make that deal. Carolina number four. 
I'll take Stefan Diggs That'd and your very, number one very, and a number two or something like that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Would not surprise me a bit if something like that happened. We'll go Chicago's an absolute yes. Of course. Beyond that, where where do we go? So Las Vegas, uh, Baltimore, no, Maybe no. Washington. Uh, Washington it could be a yes. Yeah, yeah. Washington is is a yes. Just depends. They're they're playing well right now. It just depends on how the board falls. But I think they win the play. Answer. I think they win the division. They're not going to take quarterback. I don't think they will because of what the board looks like. Yeah. yeah. But if they are swapped in with the Jets and they're at the number two pick, they're taking Justin Fields. Okay. That's how I know that they're a yes for quarterback. Like they're they're gonna they're looking for one. They're not gonna get one because of where they're at. Mm-hmm. But they could use a quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Arizona is a no. Dolphins again at twenty one is a no. Tampa Bay is a yes. Uh, Indianapolis Colts are a yes. This is actually where it kind of gets interesting because, yeah, Tampa Bay it, it, they're not gonna stick with Tom Brady forever. Uh, I would think that this is one of those. This is where a dude who who has all the measurables, has all the physical ability, but maybe he's a year away. They probably go. They probably pull the trigger right here. Uh, Colts, I think, are the most likely trade up candidates. Um, and then you know, I, is that the fair Colts to say? Have Eason, they mm-hmm. in, but. With that being said, I think that was a fourth round pick last year. Yeah, so Easton's not. You're not invested in that yeah, necessarily. You're not proven to me that um, he's the dude. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it's so hard to say theoretically. Tampa Bay, you got to look to the future. You got to mm-hmm. see where you know where it's going to go. Both teams in this and uh, Pittsburgh as well. Throw Pittsburgh in that same group of teams where they have a good aging quarterback, but mm-hmm. you got to have an answer soon. Yeah. So so are, are we saying? I think Indianapolis should be a yes because we know that this is this is Phil Rivers last year. I I feel very confident saying that. Tom Brady and and uh, I'm, I'm going to say no on Tampa Bay. Tom Brady has another year. Yeah, Tom, Tom Brady has another year, and we know they don't uh, have to do it. The Steelers have another year with uh, with Roethlisberger, so we're good there. Rams, Seattle, Titans, none of those teams are going to take a quarterback. Then you uh, you agree, right? Yeah. Okay, I was going to say. Um, and then moving down the list, the last one that could realistically take a quarterback is the Saints. The rest are Buffalo, Green Bay, and Kansas City. None of those teams are taking a quarterback. But I would have said that Green Bay w- wasn't going to take a quarterback last year, and look what happened. So. So we'll see. Look what uh, happened. It pissed Aaron Rodgers off, and now he's going to win the MVP. Dude, damn listen, it, it worked. It fucking, I was going to say the same thing. It worked. <laughs> Jordan Love, there's an argument out there that Jordan Love is the best offseason acquisition in the Packers history. Yes. Because if they end up winning a Super Especially Bowl because they, of this, if they fucking win a Super Bowl because you lit a fire thank, under thank Aaron Jordan Rodgers. Love to it. Yes. And technically, Jordan Love has a ring. Yeah. There you go, John. Yeah. You win your argument, bro. He was the first one to get a ring. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, and last one, obviously, New Orleans Saints. A very interesting conversation because I don't think they take a quarterback. I don't. I, I think they are fine. I think they're really, really fine with Taysom Hill at, at the reins. And what they'll do is they're going to keep Taysom Hill and they're going to keep uh, they're going to keep James. Uh, Jameis. And they'll they'll run it with that. This has to be Drew Brees' last year. I would be shocked if he sticks yeah, around. Yeah, I, I could see where they do it. I could also see very easily where Sean Payton says, I'm an offensive genius. I'll win, the, I'll win with what I got right now. Yeah. And I think that might be one of the stipulations that isn't public about Taysom Hill's contract because they didn't play Jameis yeah. when the quarterback went down. They ran to Taysom, and Taysom wanted franchise money. Well, mm-hmm. he didn't take franchise money, but maybe they had a stipulation there that said, hey, when court, when it's time for a quarterback, I want to show you. Yeah. I, I want that, and I'll stay. Boom, there we are. Yeah. All right, so those are those are the na- those are the names. Let's go back through this really quick and let's count them up, right? Jacksonville's taking a quarterback. Period, right? I'm just going through the names that are absolutely going to take a quarterback, and then we can go back around. Jacksonville's taking a quarterback. Chicago's taking a quarterback. The New England Patriots are taking a quarterback. Yes. Beyond that, there's no guarantee on any of the other ones. Of course, three quarterbacks are going to go in the first round because those three teams. I don't foresee them not taking a quarterback. Now, then you get into the maybes, right? And, and this is where it kind of gets interesting because I, I can definitively say at this point in the season, Cam Newton will not be a starter next year. He might be backing up somewhere. He might have a chance to start, whatever. He will not be a starter. But I, I will argue that that Stafford will be. If, oh, exactly. if it's not yeah. with the Lions, and look, I'm just going through like the maybes. Yeah. If it's not with the Lions, it, it will be somewhere else, and it'll be a team that like the Colts. If the fucking Colts want to move on from from Philip Rivers, and they need a quarterback. Hey, Matthew Stafford, we'll take you for a couple of years. Uh, I I know for a fact that I'm trying to think of Jameis Winston will be a conversation in the off season, right? He might be starting somewhere. I, you look at San Francisco, they can figure it out with Garoppolo if they Sam believe. Sam Darnold in the Jets. Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold like, can yeah. start. There are three teams that are going to take a quarterback. And look, we we put out a lot of maybes. And, and at this time, last year, again, there were a lot of maybes that we could have talked about, that we that we could have really you know dug into. And I'm sure we did. I know a lot of other people did with, with mocks and stuff. But stop telling me there's going to be five quarterbacks going this draft. 
It's not I, I just don't think it's going to happen. There's not going to be six. So, so all these quarterbacks that are going, let's let's go through Matt Jones. If he comes out this year, he is not going to be a first round pick. I'm sorry, he's you really not. don't think so? No, he's not. He's not going to be one of the top three quarterbacks that go. And and that's an, that's, that's the argument. argument that's the argument. argument. If you're not top, three, okay. It's and not like, look, and, and there might be a later, you know, like number twenty. I'm I'm willing to say that if you if I had to pick. How many? Let go, me man? let me rephrase this argument because yeah. last year there was one quarterback that goes twenty through that, that went to the Packers late. I'm talking top fifteen teams are making a serious top ten, top fifteen teams are making a serious investment for their future type of decision, right? So so look, there there might be, and also I I will stand by the Mac Jones argument because Mac Jones is not the physical talent, and I haven't studied him, but I know off of tape he's not the physical talent that you look for in the mid twenties when you're just looking for for physical ability that you can hopefully mold, right? Like that's not what Mac Jones is. Mac Jones is, you know, he 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 might be a great starter in the NFL. But but he's going to be a great star because of his decision making because he's throwing ball and you know like yeah. things like that. It's not physical, you know. It's not raw. raw talent. Yeah. Thank thank you very much. It's not raw talent. Um. So three quarterbacks go. We know it's Trevor Lawrence. We know I that can, for I sure. I can see more. I can see more. Well, well, okay. So where where's it at? I can see five. I can see five going not based on team. I can see five going based on name and the talent and the way that I am seeing mock shape out. Yeah. And well, then there could be teams that that take. I I understand. Trust me that the names always fall. But you have Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Matt Jones. That's what I'm trying Heisman to say. Heisman winner Kyle Trask. That, that's what I'm saying. There's six names yeah. that are out there. And I'm telling you right now, these guys should probably go back to school. I think, I'll I think say if you're Kyle Trask, Trask go and back Matt to school. Jones, go back. Go back. will be the one and two next year. Go back. Kyle Trask and Matt Jones got to go back. These six names, not all six. I guarantee you right now, of these six names that are out, a couple of them are going to go back. And every single one can, by the way. Like every single one, even if they're senior, I don't know every single even, player's situation. Even Trevor and Justin doesn't Fields matter back, because this this year didn't count yeah. to your, towards your eligibility anyway. So every single one of these guys can go back for you know a, a number of they, years if they these want. These kids to. are going to have to truly surround themselves with smart people, not filling their heads. If you're Mac Jones, especially Mac, you're a guaranteed top ten pick, possibly top five. I'm hearing Bullshit. buzz that the Carolina Bullshit. Panthers will take you. Bullshit. Don't. Listen, Mac Jones you, ain't going in the first round. There, there's, there's good. T- there's a chance. I'm not going to say that there, there's not a. There's. I think there's a chance that okay. Mac, that I'll give Mac you Jones that. can go. Well, if he wins the Heisman, I think it's hard to say that a Heisman quarterback doesn't go in the first round. From what we've seen, he's a talented quarterback. Uh, he kind of smells like a Bears quarterback for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Look, you're right. The Bears might take him. That'll be there's, a bad there's pick. A chance to say that. <laughs> but I'm saying surround yourself with smart people and know your worth. That yeah. I mean Jacob Eason. After the uh, the combine came out, man, he has a rocket arm. I'm hearing that the Buccaneers are looking at him in the first round. He went in the fourth round. Think if he was given the opportunity to maybe wait another year. Of course, this wouldn't be the year to it come out. Be, yeah. But Matt Jones and Kyle Trask, very talented. Listen, I think all wait. I think all the names that we mentioned, all these teams that we mentioned that yeah. that could have a chance to to draft a team or, or draft a quarterback that are maybe's. Look, San Francisco will be stupid. If they don't drive a quarterback in the first round, they would be stupid not to take one of these guys in, in the second or third round at some point. Like if San Francisco has to do, has a chance to do what the Eagles did this past year with a Jalen Hurts type of guy, I'm not saying Can we count the second round too then in saying that all six of those names come out? Do they all six go in the first and second? I, I think Mac Jones is Jacob Eason. I, I'm sorry. I think Mac Jones. Wow. Mac, Mac Jones is getting all the hype right now. Mac Jones will be a mid round pick. It would not. <laughs> I sh- feel dirty for defending an Alabama quarterback. Look, I, I'm sh- I'm sorry. Look, I, I get it. I 100 I percent understand. And look, I haven't studied these guys, so I can go. The, is it the turnoff from the talent? Because this is one thing that I have to acknowledge. Yeah. The talent that is surrounding Mac is outstanding. To, yeah. Look, and look, part of that was the same issue I had with, with Tua last year. But like, I look at, I, I look at the difference between when Tua was in and when Mac Jones was in last year. Yeah, the product on the field, it, it didn't really matter. Alabama was going to win because Alabama was going to win. But you could clearly tell a drop off. I think okay. that that that's my first thing is it, it's the little because I didn't study Mac Jones, but I did study a lot of the players that were on Alabama last year. So I did notice when Tua was throwing the ball and when Mac Jones was throwing the ball. So I, I can definitively say Mac Jones is not a top 10 quarterback in the NFL or not to, a top 10 draft pick. I can definitively say that I without having seriously studied him, I feel confident saying that. And yeah, in I this will. draft, and you're saying six guys go, look, maybe, I, okay, yeah, I, I guess that's, the team in the bottom of the so, second round so could take him. It's so hard to just shove sure. that door shut, you sure. know? Yeah, you're right. It's sure. There, but I don't think it will. I don't think it will. There's a chance that certain guys believe 
this day and age in quarterback, we haven't seen it in a long time, but there was one draft in particular where there are names that just flew off the fucking board that we're not supposed to, and a Jake Locker to the Titans. Yeah, that was that Christian was the big Potter, year. Like it's just like, what is going on this here? This could be that year. I don't know though. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm just saying is these this, six names are very, very talented. Is this okay? So the last time we had legitimately five names that that went in the first round was the the Baker Mayfield of uh, you know uh, Baker Sam Josh Josh. Josh and Josh, Josh Allen and Josh Rosen, and then uh, and then obviously Lamar. Lamar. At the end. Yeah. So, is this class that talented coming out? I'm sorry, like top end, yes, top end for sure. Trevor Lawrence is better than any five of those names oh, coming yeah, out for but sure. I, I don't even like look at Trevor and take him for what he is. Yeah, he's the best. I'm not going to accrue value to this class because of how good Trevor is. Yeah, exactly. I take Trevor being a legendary. He's going to be a great quarterback. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, I Justin Fields, that. great quarterback. Zach Wilson, promising talent. Possibly great quarterback based off yeah. of that. Kyle Trask, I think he can be a Has good quarterback. Has a lot of good things going for him. Yeah. Mac Jones, I see Mac Jones' ceiling being. I, I don't. He throws a he throws a really pretty deep ball. He yeah. reads the field well, but with this day and age in quarterback and the way that we see athletic mobility on stretching plays Is out, it, Mac Mac can throw a good. He can make every NFL throw you want. I, I can I can say that for sure. He can make all the NFL throws you want. He's, he's limited in certain areas. I, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disagree with you because I'm not confident in that. I, yeah, I, I, won't, I get it. I won't say I'm I agree either because I haven't a, studied Mac it. Mac is a good quarterback. He is okay. a, he is a he is a talent out there. I, I don't know if he's first round. Listen, I don't know. I, I'm I'm again. I haven't gone under the hood and studied Trask him is. as a quarterback. Trask is a good quarterback. Trask does look. Trask is really promising. A lot of times, like I was a little low on Trask coming into this season, and, and I feel like he's he's really improved, and and he already had a lot of things going for him last year. I'm very intrigued by it by Kyle Trask. I look at Mac as and Grant, this is just TV watching, not really me studying him and studying, you know, the the play and all those other things that go into to talent evaluation, all that. I, I every every ball he throws is wide open. Like I, I'm sorry, I just yeah, there, there are I have like, issue. Yeah, every 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 pass he throws, there's nobody around him. Like I, I'm sorry, and look, this is just me TV watching. I haven't studied Alabama. I don't watch Alabama play every single week. Maybe there's a lot of super athletic plays that I'm just not seeing. I, I haven't seen any fucking play where it's like, oh shit, he's a baller. I, it just to me, this feels like, hey, this dude is is the quarterback on the best team in in college football. Like that's what it feels like. It's like it's it, better than that. Okay, I, I see him get mentioned in the same Greg McElroy, typical old school white quarterback who can just hand the ball off. Matt can do more than that. He is not up there with Zach Wilson, the top three in this class. Talent wise, yeah, yeah, he's not up there for that. Okay, um, t- there, there's a chance that team might be intrigued by it. Me personally, no. I am more inclined to take a shot, and this is this is me being bold on Trey Lance. All right, so so before we get into Trey Lance, because I, yeah. I totally get what you're what you're saying there. I, one more thing on Mac Jones that we can move on, we can put it to bed. I look at Mac Jones the same way I looked at the hype for Jake Fromm. The fail for Fromm, <laughs> yeah. Like, like I'm, I'm Fromm. sorry. Like, I, I, I get it. I, I understand. Hey, he's a good quarterback. He, he's a technically fine dude who, 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 you know, can be a good backup for a long time in this league. But I'm sorry, Mac Jones to me right now is not a dude who you draft in the first or second round. And the reason being, after you get out of the top 15, like, like in the top. Top 15 is you want talent and, you know, really good processing ability, you know, like that combination. After that, most teams are just looking for legit physical ability that they can mold, right? Yeah. That's that's why, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jordan Love got drafted in the first round. You know, I was <laughs> I don't think the original goal that's, was to That's to why hype Trey up. Lance and Zach Wilson will go here. Exactly. That's why I want to get the, that I, out. I get the go fraud, to Trey the, Lance the, and Zach The Fromm thing is, is kind of scary because good team, Georgia, perennial powerhouse, yeah. At the helm, surrounded by a lot of talent. Mac Jones, I think he's in like a little bit better than Fromm on a lot of the stuff that yeah. you see. But man, yeah, there's similarities there in saying that for sure. at one point you were saying fail for Fromm as if it's yeah. a guaranteed. And this top is 10 this hit. is one year of Mac Jones, right? After one year of, of Fromm, everyone's saying this is the next Tom Brady. I remember reading an article from from BR. I don't know who wrote it. Who said this could be the next Tom Brady? Yeah, it was Fromm, Jake Fromm. There's a reason so, that Georgia chose to stick with Fromm instead yeah. of Justin Fields at Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. That's, so so stop. Yeah, so I, I, we there, absolutely there's a agree. chance. I'll, I'll go to Trey Lance. He has played very few games out there. He got to play a showcase this year because of all the COVID rules, and mainly that wasn't even for the team. That was for him. He rushed for 180 yards, a couple touchdowns. He was running over some cornerbacks. He is a a very big body built frame, strong arm quarterback. But at the end of the day, how 
how bold is it going to be for a team to invest a first round pick on him when you haven't truly seen him play for two years? Yeah. And even, tough. even this year in his showcase, he had more rushing yards than he did in passing yards. Yeah. And that showcase was nothing. I'm sorry. A and, showcase. And that quarterback yeah. style isn't, isn't around right now. Yeah. So that, that showcase versus uh, whoever the fuck it was a no name school. That's not a real showcase. Your showcase is going to be at the senior bowl and they're going to let him in. Uh, so, so that'll be interesting. I, I'm excited to see what Trey Lance can be. I, I know there's, there's a lot of prominent guys in, in this field that, that really think he can be a legitimate dude. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say I disagree because I haven't really studied him too much. It's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough evaluation. I think for every He's team. He's going to have one of the hardest jumps yeah. you've ever seen though, going from FCS two years ago, talent yeah. to NFL. Yeah. Boom. Tough, very tough. Hey, uh, before we close the show, because I think we we do we hit everything on that topic before we move on. Do you have anywhere else you want to go there? Huh? We hit all the, the six. Okay. I think. So so ones. if you're good on that, I have some breaking news for you. I'm just Uh-oh. looking at my phone. Auburn is narrowing in on head coach potential deal between Boise State coach Brian Harson. Boise State's had a good program for a long time. Um, it's expected soon. Wow! This is this is breaking news, guys. They're on the pod, like right yeah, now, Auburn you had not heard out. this. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting your raw reaction here. Ah uh, man, um, he. I'm putting you on the spot. You had no preparation you for know, this. No, you're you're good. I, I know that Boise State is a good team. He's able to recruit up there in the uh, in the Mountain West, but that's I, I'm I'm just gonna say disappointing. So uh, I'm going to say initial reaction is disappointment just because I go back to where I said, show me a name that is definitively better than Gus. That's not yeah, it. Was that's that not the name it you're looking the for? No, that off the top of my head, there's only like four or five guys that I really wanted. Uh, Boise State head coach, not one of them, because I didn't even know the name of him. So Trey Scott uh, tweeted out, I like Brian Harrison fine. Uh, I hope I'm saying that name right. I apologize. I don't think I've ever heard it said before. Um, as I like Brian Harrison fine, but it feels like Auburn just hired a light version of Gus Malzahn after a proce- uh, process that cost $20 million. Is that a fair argument? Well, that, is that, that a fair it's, statement? It's a step down after paying $21 million buyout. You do not want to take a lateral, if not less move. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. That's, that's a tough, Oh, what did wow. Ferguson say? Yeah, let's that's, see. That's one of my favorite options. Sorry, practice. current. Uh, yeah, here, I'll let you read it. Yeah. So current and former players are posting about how they're unhappy with what's going on. A lot of fans seem to be on edge of meltdown, downright apathy. Programs rep is taking hits. Auburn needs coaching search now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's fair. It's just showing the dismay in the program yeah. as a whole. I, I would say any coach you can pull right now is good. I'm still disappointed. I kind of was holding out for Hugh Freeze yeah. a little bit just because I know the promise behind that name. I know that he's been at that level. It's going to be hard for a guy, man, to get that next jump and come in and compete with the big boys, wow. Alabama, right yeah. away. I love, this is our first breaking news moment on the spot. Yeah. I mean, like legitimate, holy shit. Auburn head coach, man? Yeah, that, I know this hits you because now... Like, it's okay. <laughs> I just got to think about it. Because I, I know your preparation process and you spend a lot of time and and, and you have nothing, you have nothing I, I, here. I crunch numbers. Yeah, I'm of course. I'm recruiting here. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking about Alabama whooping our butts for years to come. <laughs> um, wow. It's too God, bad. here we go. <laughs> hey, it's not official, but it's looking like, especially the way that we've we've kind of broke down how this Auburn coaching search has football. looked. Uh, yeah, Boise State. I look, really been wanted a, to know the name. Been a good school for a long time. Really has. Uh, I, I don't know how long he's been there. I'm going to be honest. I kind of just skimmed this I'm, article I'm while you're talking. Later, yeah. I, I don't know anything about him. I'm going to be really, really honest with you. Uh, I'm trying to just go back and skim. They won the Fiesta Bowl 69 to 19. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, Boise State is always a good program, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, cool. I'm sorry, buddy. It's okay. I mean, it is what it is. We'll we don't see, know. We'll see how it plays we'll out. We'll come back next week. Gus was a high school coach who got his shot. Exactly. So we'll come back next week with maybe a little bit more of a of a detailed uh, breakdown of that yeah. hire, and, and I'll let you take a part of that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much to Underdog Podcast Network for having us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Peace out, guys. See you next week. State. I don't know, man. I'm torn. Like, yeah. I know that they have a lot of good that comes from there. Yeah. But I mean, we couldn't even get fucking PJ Fleck or the Western Michigan guy. Yeah, no way. Or Iowa State. Like, Jeez. when you when you think of those promising names. Like, I get why G- PJ Fleck wouldn't go. I mean, obviously because of the big names. But Brian and Brian Harrison, man. I don't. I'm, I think we're both about to do the same thing. Boise here. ball coming your way. Yeah.
Brian Harson. Harson. Uh, what was I saying? Harrison. Yeah. Look up Brian Harson. Next football coach replacing Gus Malzahn. Auburn set the high. Oh, oh, he went 69 and 19 with the Broncos total. That wasn't just after winning the festival. I misread that. So he's been there a long time, coach. He's been there for a while, yeah. That's okay. He's been there for a long time. He's what built the up a, fuck is with us going for Arkansas State head coaches, bro? He's the guy who took over after Gus left for the Auburn job. Really? At Arkansas State. That's what we got in 2013. We got Gus back wow. from Ark State. That is so weird. Why are they dipping into that again? 